Hello everyone, um, this is the Finance Committee, uh, February 20th, and I'm going to call the meeting to order. Thank you. So uh, we're going to start with uh, reviewing some dates. Uh, we'll be going over uh, planning on meeting all the departments, which was talked about in the select board. Um, we're going to do it by division. So we have a few, here's the list of divisions. We have the division of general government a division of public safety, the schools, public works. We're going to add human services, culture, and rec all together. So that'll be another division. And then unclassifieds. So I just took them right in order from the 100 series down and plugged them in that way. Uh, so let's see. The first meeting, if it works, how does uh, the March 5th work? March 5th. It will be at, and all these will be at 6 o'clock. And okay. Gabriel, we've already worked out our calendar, so it does it work for you? Yes. Perfect. It when does. 6th or 5th? Well, it'll be the 5th of Monday, but at 6 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, that works for you? Yes. Right. Okay, I'm going to plug it in then. <coughs> so that'll be 6 p.m. And we'll be doing general government. And David, if for some reason, so you're going to send out an email, once we book all these to the de department heads, if you're having trouble, um, I'm guessing maybe we you can just, like if, Public Works can't meet that time, maybe switch it with general government or something. Mm -hmm. You'll just mm -hmm. move them around yep. and let us know. Okay. All right. So then the 8th, March 8th, for public safety at 6 p.m. Uh, Thursday? Thursday. The 8th. At, at what time? At 6? Six? 6. Okay. Should work. All right. I'll be a little late for that. I'll be in contract negotiations, but they won't take long. I, we can make it later. I don't have a problem no, with it. Go ahead. <clears throat> this would be for police. Police and fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we make it a little bit later because they're going to be talking negotiations. Okay, seven o'clock on that one. Seven o'clock. Okay, seven o'clock. Public safety. Okay. All right. Is that a smart thing? Do you think we'll run over, or should we even switch it with a different department? Is that going to uh, be a problem? I might switch you guys around a little bit. So, but let me talk to. You. I think we'll be okay if we get into negotiations from five five o'clock to six thirty. We should be able to do seven o'clock for you all. Okay. Okay. If there's a problem, I'll let you know. I think the 13th was your next one. The 13th, yes. Tuesday would be the schools. The 13th. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Uh, the schools may be marching to a different drummer, so okay. I'll confirm this for you. Okay. And when I say that, that, mean, that means that they have their own process and statutory requirements that they have to adhere to. Public Works will do on Monday the 19th. Six p.m.? Six p.m. Okay. Human services, all that stuff will be the 29th, Thursday. The 29th? Yeah. Okay. 6 p.m.? Okay. Okay. Uh, 
right. And then let's see. April 3rd, I'm headed down for the unclassified. Okay. Is that be that would be benefits of have transfers of special insurance. So that is Tuesday the 3rd. Yep. No, that's the first though. That's again the first. That, that messes up the TV. Well, we looked at <clears throat> the 5th and it doesn't work for you. No, it didn't. I'm, I'm really happy to come and film. It's it's quite all right. Okay, we'll just do that. The yeah. one. Okay. So the third? The third? Mm -hmm. Okay. Six o'clock? Six o'clock. Okay. That work for you? Okay. April 3rd? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 6 p.m. Okay, that's it for now. So, which one was public safety again? Okay, public the second one. Yeah, public safety, the second one. Oops, March. <clears throat> that's 8th. Of April. March. Of, of March. Oh, of March, okay. You've already got that one. So, yeah. Copy of that? Yes. So, March 5th, and that's at 6. Yeah. 6 p.m. I think that's one. The only one that's at 7 is, that, is on the 8th, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was off by a week. So the Council of Governments meets the second and fourth Thursdays of every month. So the eighth is the one conflict I'll have. The eighth you'll have a conflict. Yes, the HCOG, but everything else will be open. Okay, well we should probably switch that. We should fix that then. Okay. Do you want to do back to back, Monday, Tuesday? That would be on the 6th. The 5th and the 6th. Okay. Get it over and done with. Does that work for you, David? Yep. Okay. Get it over. 6 o'clock? Can we do it at 6 then? Okay. So, 6 p.m. we got to switch that. Hold on, David. We're going to switch that one. I think the rest of them would be right. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. And that's just to meet with the groups. Now, if we want to, we can discuss all the other stuff, you know, what that we're doing. I mean, that's just to let them be able to say whatever they would like to say, mm -hmm. you know, and go over it. We already have... The, um, a balanced budget, you know, from what we listened to David on, on um, at the select board, right? So, do you want to set up a time for us to discuss any, you know, the other? Yeah. We were talking to David. I said this is all. This is is uh, uh, the meetings with the departments. Mm -hmm. But we would also, I mean, that doesn't give us any time to discuss. Anything else that we normally discuss, such as, you know, the, going over the warrant, mm -hmm. we need to go over, you know, the other things, the we, the override we want to talk about, the um, form of government mm -hmm. we want to talk about. So we need to figure out when would be. A, okay. Any ideas? Um, early April, maybe. Now, here's the thing: the warrant is needs to be done. Or anything that we're going to be pre -present, presenting, right? Would you say that? Uh, I have to April? post on the twenty sixth. That's my drop dead uh, deadline. So uh, April. 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 Oh, April. April. Okay. And that means that means all legal review has to be done by then too. Need some time to. So what's the soft yeah. deadline? Yeah. So what's the soft deadline then? Well, no, it's actually a uh, hard deadline. If we don't post on the 26th, we're not having a town meeting. Right, so that's the hard deadline. What's the soft deadline soft for when deadline. you'd like us to have everything? Uh, it would be great if we could do this on the 18th. Okay. Uh, April. April. Not our meeting, but having 
having everything done on the board. No. Oh, I see. Okay. So when would you like, when do you think? Now we sh probably should, that's not a bad idea. We probably should meet that week before mm -hmm. to make sure that we're all set. Okay. Right? Right. So mm -hmm. Monday the 16th is a holiday. April 16th is a holiday. And sometimes that coincides with a school break. Oh, yeah. So it won't affect me because my son's in college. It's okay with me. Um, this right. is a school break too. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, we'll have a new select board at that point. Do we want to? I don't know. Do the Monday or two? So Mondays and Tuesdays seem to be better for you. Uh, when when I'm teaching in Minnesota, that is definitely true. Monday and Tuesdays are better. Okay. So um, ninth and tenth. Is that, does that give you enough time, David? The 9th and 10th would give them enough time, but we... Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm open for either. Okay. Which one would you like? Um, uh, wait, uh, yeah, and, and the planning board's the 1st and the 3rd, so, so everything seems open on that. So 9th or 10th, whichever you prefer. So 10th is election day, so I would say... The 9th, uh, then, huh? So I would do 9th. Okay. The ninth. Yeah. Okay. So long as you promise to vote on the tenth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So six p.m. So then, if we have to finish um, putting in any votes for the uh, um, warrant, you know, our recommendations. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we can have everything completed mm -hmm. on that. And we can do run through of the articles tonight. And you know, give you a sense of what you don't like and what you do or what, where do you need more information. Okay, so now, how about any of the other articles? Because I know that we would want, to, I mean, the other things that we would like to discuss. The, um, I want to give, the, like, to have a thing on, on the override in the form of government. Mm -hmm. And maybe another pass through of the warrant. What would you like? What do you think a good date would be? In terms of the override, well, I strongly suggest that we use the tri boards as a way to talk through those issues because we don't have we don't have the select boards thinking mm -hmm. about override at this point. So, so I don't think the tri will be too productive for that conversation. Okay. So maybe just to jump into it, can we get a recap? And I've been very disconnected for a little while, so I mm -hmm. appreciate kind of being looped back in. On the override, to get our proposal ready, to feel comfortable speaking about it, we were each assigned kind of different, like you would speak to human services, you would speak to public safety, mm -hmm. et cetera. But in terms of getting the numbers, do we have an outline of the work that's left to do for us to actually get numbers that we'd want to put in an override? I don't think so. No. I, I don't think we're prepared. I don't think that um, anybody did so did IT me no. so there was going to be a, a, a group a small group for I, my, I remember mm -hmm. IT um, human resources and for the um, financial manager uh, the, yeah, and I don't think any of them met okay. so I think that was the first part of it is for them to meet and to um, put together, you know, an idea of what we're going to need mm -hmm. and how, like, I thought that group, like, say, let's talk about, um, human resources. Well, that group was going to help present, say, by doing this, these are our options. We can, we could maybe outsource this, maybe the, um, the HCOG could help us. Maybe they were going to come up with the ideas mm -hmm. they were going to say oh and maybe and we we would need this amount of money for one position maybe or, or whatever their ideas came up to be we were going to need um we were going to save money because it would take away time from each one of these departments and maybe they could help we could put a number to the time that they're saving but they come up with a plan and a number mm -hmm. and then this group would put together all those each each one and then that come becomes the override that's how i was seeing it i mean but i don't think any of anybody met or have done the numbers so i don't think we're prepared 
at all to present an override. We can say that, but we can't give anybody facts. There's not there's not nothing to support it. Is, is our problem? So my thinking behind is that we would, for the first year, definitely shoot conservatively in terms of what we'd be asking for. And this is me speaking, so sure. you disagree. Um, in terms of HR, it would be if we needed a position, like, back up. With more money, there's more that we could do in finance, HR, IT. Any amount of money would go a long way. So I think that by asking conservatively to start one position in IT, for example, one position in HR, to then supplement it later with, are we contracting through the HCOG with the grant that they're looking at, et cetera. Um, it might be easier to wrap our head around those numbers and to lean more on the research that we've done years ago because we've been saying we need IT, HR, and finance for years, apparently. So David, how hard would it be to look back at when we've looked at HR before and come up with the conservative, what would a single position responsibilities and cost be, leaving the rest of it for later? So uh, I, th I think that we go back to the Department of Revenue uh, Management reports from 2013 and 2017. These are online. Um, <clears throat> I recommend that we look at job descriptions for small towns, and I can query the managers on that, and a salary range for, for uh, such a position. Okay, and then do we have something comparable for finance? Same deal. Department of Revenue 2013. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And job descriptions. Okay. I think that, and then IT, which I'm a little more plugged into, and I know it's a little more mm -hmm. complicated with the capital, mm -hmm. but I think we can pull something together. I'll get on that by the next meeting. That with those three target areas, oh, and public safety. We don't really have anything for public safety. Right, because we were able to, with the additional firefighters, as part of the balanced budget that we have select board made that a priority, so I don't think we're too concerned with that. It was expressed a while ago that the plan that the chief had put in place was like a bare minimum, this is what I need, and that in the future we would still be looking to enhance personnel past those four positions we've talked about, but it sounds like not for this year and not for this override. Correct. And down the road, I mean, we'll want to look at, <clears throat> I mean, for the future, it might be something where we need them t to staff, you know, 24-7. You know, th where we only have them staff day and use the volunteers for nighttime. Mm -hmm. But, you know, too, down the road, if we're doing an ambulance service, you know, depending how we end up doing that, that might be something that, that's involved with public safety. Gotcha. Okay, and then, so would we be comfortable starting off with the finance, IT, HR, very conservative base numbers, basically looking at just positions and salary for a single individual in each, bringing that back to finance committee and seeing how we feel about it. There are additional options, like we said, working with the HCOG through their HR service portal that they're getting a grant for. We can talk about that later. Finance would probably be rolled into a conversation about form of government in terms of David's supervision and et cetera. But in terms of just the numbers and the override, I think that's pretty reasonable. And I think we could have those ready by our next general finance committee meeting. Does that sound like it makes sense? Yeah. Does that seem feasible, David? You. If I work with you on the IT and mm -hmm. then the other stuff we can pull from the DOR? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, so we can get those numbers together and talk about it and then and, yep. and set up a meeting to do that if you'd like. Gotcha. And then the other half of that Sorry. Oops, the other half of that will be familiarizing ourselves with the history, the arguments why we need these, the plan moving forward of that's the time we will talk about how HR expands beyond this in the coming years. Or I'll talk about IT and like this is the base capital that we'll need, but here's how the network and the infrastructure is going to grow. Um, mm -hmm. et cetera. So once we have the numbers in place, that's all well and good. We can get it on the warrant, but our job after that will be making sure we can get up there and argue it. Because we are going to have people assigned 
to each one of those things, and we're going to have a lot of questions as to why we need tens of thousands of dollars in additional staff. So I think that'll okay. be the big discussion point. Cool. Yeah, I just, um, I, uh, I think that the override is going to be a hard thing to sell, and I don't think it's going to, you're going to get a, it's going to, you could take it now and then try it again to get some more money later. Um, so yeah. it's one of those things. It's uh, yeah, yeah. We have to be well prepared, and you have to have all your numbers. And you're go we're gonna have to. Um, this this is it. Well, I mean, yes. And it's part of the conversation. I think that it's one way to do it by saying this is it. This is the one override we're going to ask for, and that's where we would try to flush out every option, chase down every lead, and say this is why we're asking for such a big amount. And I don't think that we're going to say that this is the only one we're ever going to ask for because it's probably never the case, right? But what I'm saying is we, that that's probably reality. <laughs> right, but <laughs> I say we try to pitch it the complete other way, saying yeah. what we're asking for now is very conservative mm -hmm. because we want an HR specialist to then tell us what we need in HR. We want a finance director to then tell us how much more we will need in future years. Okay. So we're trying to be conservative about it. I think that's, and we can talk about that later, but the way that we pitch it, is that this is minor and it's minor for a reason because we're trying to be conservative about the steps forward we're taking. Mm -hmm. But I think I think that makes it feasible. Mm -hmm. I think that the taxpayers won't look at that and be so off put or so scared because we're not coming at them with such a large amount mm -hmm. relatively. You know, it's primarily to give us more support, to give us more information for future, mm -hmm. to better inform them and us. Mm -hmm. I think they'll be receptive to that. Okay. When would you what would be a good time for to review that all that you'd like? Well, we have the general meeting on the 9th. Is that what was that agenda looking like again? Which one? Which, which month? Our finance committee just we have a general meeting scheduled for the 9th to make sure that things are ready for the warrant. But oh, I um, mean, we could do it then. I mean, if you feel like that's giving us enough time. <clears throat> You need to do it after the tenth because you need the select board to pull the trigger on the on the override. They have to be on board. How do you mean? They're they're the only ones who can authorize the the override. Who is it? The, the select, select board. board. Oh. Town meeting is town meeting votes to authorize this, the override, but. Mm -hmm. the, Override it only happens if the select board choose to actively make an override happen. So if you're going to have, but if you're going to potentially have a new select board on April 10th. <clears throat> but why couldn't they make that happen on town meeting floor? So town meeting votes it in, and then the select board votes to. Because town office. meeting can't compel them to do it. Oh, I see. So it is theoretically possible for a town meeting to vote an override in the select board. Don't take the appropriate uh, votes in order to actually implement, schedule the election, etc. So they need to be on board. Okay. Do we need to pitch them first? So maybe can we make Wednesday the 11th a, a tri-board meeting? Like that. We can ask. See if they would do that. That way, we meet on the 9th, get our pitch together, and then on the, and maybe the 11th, try to right. pitch. So I've got uh, the select board meeting the 4th, the 11th, the 18th, the 25th. Um, so they're so meeting 4th, 11th, eight, they're meeting every Wednesday. They're meeting the 4th, the 18th, and oh, the 25th. Okay. Oh, the 4th, the 18th, so and 25th. So we're asking them to add a tri board on the 11th. So oh. we'll. We'll ask them to readjust their, their schedule. We'll bring that up tomorrow night at the meeting. Either that or we would do it on the 18th. But. I don't know if that gives enough time. <clears throat> well, can we, can we look at March to fit another meeting in? On one of the weeks where we only have one meeting with the departments to have a general slash override discussion? Sure, but when do you want to pitch? You would still couldn't pitch it to the select board until sometime after the tenth. Right. April. Okay. Yeah, but I'm saying that 
Yeah, sure. just to give us more time. Sure. Kind of ahead of time so that it doesn't quite matter as much when we pitch it if we're better prepared ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So are you, are we going to, what are we um, do about the 11th or the 18th? Do you want to try for the, or do you want to, can we do the 18th? Or, I mean, David, what do you think? Should, try board. Uh, I would try for the 11th. You would try for the 11th? Yeah. That's what you'll try for, okay. Find out who you have. Well, the three of us, can we all make it? I can. Yep. Okay. So maybe, and, and then maybe Terry will be four. So we can make, try, board. And then, but that's if the, they can do it, the um, select board. Yeah, I'll talk to Molly about that. Okay. And do we have a tri-board meeting in March? Yes, you do. You have a tri-board meeting on March 7th. Oh, that's going to be a fun oh. week. Fifth, sixth, and seventh. Well, I won't be there, but well, what is on the fifth and the sixth? Your meeting. General government March fifth is the fifth. Okay. Right. Yeah. Do you have that? No. Yeah, but I'm not going to be there for that. I'll be in Minnesota on the fifth. On March fifth. Um. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's right. That's okay. I'm sorry, excuse me. Yep. So March 5th, mm -hmm. March 6th, mm -hmm. and then the 7th is the tri-board. Okay. What time does tri-board start? Usually 6 o'clock. And you'll be away, Valerie? Uh, I will be able to be there. Oh, you will on yeah. March. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. March 7th, right? March 7th. Mm -hmm. March 6th. Seventh, is, Seventh is, yeah. is Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And that will be at? They always start at 6. 6, okay. That's a long week for us. Because mm -hmm. we can't get enough of this stuff. Wow. So not to make it longer, the 7th, could it make sense for that tri-board meeting, which would usually go from 6 to 7, and then 7 p.m. select board resumes their select board meeting? At 7 p.m., could we come to another room? Want to do that? Yeah, I'd rather get it over and done with than make a whole That's nother meeting. <laughs> and David, would the 7th be enough time for you to have the preliminary numbers? Should. Okay. So can we plan on that on 3-7 and 7 Now David won't be able to join us because he'll stay at the select board. True, yeah, but I mean, I think I should be able to have this to you by Monday, this Monday coming Oh, up. perfect. Yeah, it won't take long. Okay. And that still gives us the meeting on the 9th if we needed David for one more session before we ask yes. the select board. Okay, so the 7th, 7 p.m., which mm -hmm. would be and as soon as the tri board adjourns. 7 p.m., then come. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, David, on all these dates that we have, how do you want me to handle uh, getting these and posting them and doing all that? Well, let me uh, let me let me send around. Let me develop the, the agendas for these. Okay. And run them past you. Okay. And once I get the green light from you, I'll just have Jessica post them all. Post them all. We'll just do them all, and that way we. That would be good, so I don't forget schedule. any. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. That would be good. So what's next? Okay, so that was the big deal. <laughs> now let's um uh really w maybe we can do one quick uh, scoop of the um, warrant. Yeah. Take us through it, David. Nice and quick. <clears throat> nice Boom. and quick. All right. So <laughs> let's go through this consent agenda uh, very quickly. Okay. All right. Standard Article One: Grants. Mm -hmm. We accept them. We don't have to call it a special town meeting every time we want to 
spend $25 from a grant. Yes. Chapter 90 is going to be authorized annually by the town. We get $300,000 or more for roads and bridges. Short-term borrowing, that's something that we, standard article, we've never used it, but in case we have a cash flow issue, the, the treasurer, with the permission of the select board, can borrow in anticipation of funds. Uh, fund balances, okay, so we have a, uh, a number of, of projects are done, there's a little bit of money left over, we return that money back to the pot of, from which it came free cash stabilization or we amended the debt borrowing. I have a question on that one. Sure. All right. That's number that's four. four. Um and it kinda has to do with the other thing that goes with CPA. So in number eight, CPA we grant this money to CPA and ten thousand dollars of it goes to the CPA to use. Now, if they don't use it, do we? Would we end up putting it back in here? It automatically it goes back into CPA. But you don't need it to be enlisted in one of these. No, these these are these are articles that were voted separately. Okay, so it's an automatic thing for CPA because I'm yeah. thinking they use the ten thousand for administration reasons you know but they never use it all right 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 okay so but it automatically rolls back in okay great and that ends up being no that does not that just goes into cpa money i was thinking free cash but that goes no, back to cpa no, it money it goes back to CPA. cpa money yep all right, article number five, revolving funds. A couple of things. First of all, remember that the Department of Revenue required us to stop voting annually our revolving funds and make it a bylaw. Mm -hmm. and we only vote on revolving funds if we're changing a balance or adding something new. These are three new revolving funds. Lost books, lost and damaged materials by the library, so that the fines and fees that they would charge for that would go back into the general fund. They're wondering if they could reinvest that and back into the uh, to the library. We're talking about two hundred dollars or something like that. So mm -hmm. not worth squabbling about, I think. Yeah. Tax liens. <clears throat> um, we. Right now, the budget for the treasurer supports the legal um, legal costs of going after tax liens, people who can, will not or cannot pay for their property taxes. Mm -hmm. um, we collect all of that money at the end of the settlement, but we have to budget for it every year. We can adjust downwards the treasurer's budget if we run tax liens through a revolving fund, uh, same as we do for t uh, for delinquent taxes in the collector's office. So we're already doing this for the collectors, so we're simply doing this for the, uh, the treasurer's office. The only issue here is that we need some seed money, and we've put down the figure of $5,000 mm -hmm. to provide for seed money in order to have an initial balance in, in this. And then that should cycle through mm -hmm. for forever. I mean, so long as because whatever whatever comes back in, uh, we recoup all of our costs for underwriting the legal expenses associated with collecting tax liens. So, uh, okay. And the conservation commission, they're they're hoping to increase their a new fee associated with plan review. Currently, we don't pay for this. They're wondering if that money could come back to them rather than go to the general fund. Why isn't the money being used? Hmm? Why isn't the money being used? We don't, we're not charging right now, so it's a new oh. revenue stream. Gotcha. It would be a new revenue stream, so. I mean, we're not talking about a lot of money here. I think $500 is probably what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. 
Article 6, this is uh, something that we put on the consent agenda. It's a transfer from water reserves to a special stabilization fund to replace the f membranes on the ultra filtration water treatment plant uh, down on Bay Road. It costs, uh, costs about $260,000 to replace these, these membranes, so we put a tenth of that aside for 10 years, which is the use life of these membranes. And then on year 10, we have the kitty that's big enough that we can replace these these uh, membranes. So how many types of stabilization funds do we have currently? You, I don't have a figure off the top of my head, but you have a handful, not a whole lot, but some. I'm just thinking long term, I mean, this is exactly what should be rolled into a long range capital plan. Mm -hmm. and there should be maybe a master stabilization fund that incorporates all this mm -hmm. rather than having an individual fund for each, but that's more yeah. housekeeping than actual. Yep. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Uh, Article 7, this may be something that we don't need. This is a gift from the Friends of the Council on Aging to underwrite some of their operations. Uh, we may be able to combine that with Article 1. I'm still researching that. Okay. But if somebody wants to give us money in order to run our show, I'm good with that. I mean, yeah. We don't have a problem. CPA administrative, $10,000. That's the article that we're talking mm -hmm. about. We're required to vote that every year. Mm -hmm. Money at the end of the day goes back to CPA. Uh, article 9 is a budget adjustment for FY 2018 current fiscal year. It's in our debt and interest line. It's a net neutral amount of $37,061. We can transfer that from um, interest to principal. We can pay down more of our, of our debt faster. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a recalculation of our debt and interest payment. No impact upon budgets. So when you say no impact on budgets, when we were originally doing the calculations to come up with the budget, mm -hmm. it was taking into consideration that we would be borrowing right. more for some capital items and right. then have interest on it. Okay. Oh, this is for the FY18 budget. Right. Yeah. So we didn't, it turns out we're not going to have to pay as much in the interest in FY18. Uh, than we had anticipated, so let's divert that interest money to principal pay down, so we can gotcha. pay the pay down our so we so we'll save money later on. Mm -hmm. Article ten, the omnibus budget for FI nineteen. That's the big show. Yep. Yeah. So, there was some discussion on where the override would fit into. Mm -hmm. So, I just want to kind of recap that. So, the override could be included as part of the Article 10 omnibus budget yep. to basically say in two parts. First, you would vote on budget plus override, or I guess there's a lot of ways you can structure this. Right. And if the town meeting doesn't go for that, they can just vote on the original budget. Mm -hmm. But basically, there's a way to separate the override from the budget even if they are both within one article. Mm -hmm. The other big option is to either do that or to move the override to its own article. Mm -hmm. Functionally, is there any difference in doing that? I just want to be super clear about that because it's like we're seeing that there might be some kind of like functional difference, mm -hmm. logistical difference in either having them both in one article or both in another article. Mm -hmm. I think that it's more of an optics thing, mm -hmm. putting it on its own article versus combining them, mm -hmm. so I just want clarity. Yeah. I'm always in favor of doing one article to perform as much work as possible, so um, my, my, my thinking is, is that, you, that you put the override, if there's going to be an override, you put it into Article 10 mm -hmm. and you write it in such a way as that you have a base budget, even if the vote for override is overturned or defeated for whatever reason, you want to have a functioning government. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but there is no harm in putting it together in two articles um, and allow people
people to pass a budget that they know that they can live with, and then debate the budget that uh, that is a, a stretch. Right. So there would only be one set of recommendations if they were both in one article. Yes. Maybe that's what the select board's concerned with if they put the override and the budget all in one article. Mm -hmm. If you vote to recommend that, what you're doing is voting to support the override mm -hmm. versus separating them out. So I guess I mean, I'd like to see them both in one article. Yeah, it sounds good to me. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Who's, so was that the select board's decision then in terms of? No, they, they brought it up as a discussion, but they didn't make any decisions about it. Sorry, in terms of who gets to make the decision about no, which article? Select board. It's a select board's agenda. How's that normally done? The select board write the uh, the warrant. Mm -hmm. So if they want to split Article Ten in, into two articles, uh, Ten and Ten A, let's call it. So Ten is the base budget, and Ten A would be the override portion of that budget. And, and that's up to them. Uh, some thought needs to be, and this is way early, is what kind of override are you talking about? Mm -hmm. there, are, there are many different ways of structuring this, and they, f they have their pluses and minuses. Um, what I would like to do is send around a manual from the Department of Revenue that talks about menu type overrides, uh, contingency overrides, pyramid overrides, and that kind of thing, so you have a sense of of what are your options, because you have lots of different options for packaging this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we can put that for the, mm -hmm. the 7th, or 7 yep. p.m. meeting. I'll send it around tomorrow. Okay. Article 11, our capital expenses. Right now we have the fire substation. The last number I got from the <coughs> architect is that we are $855,400 shy in terms of borrowing for that project. Um, so we'll obviously be working with the architect and the building committee to make that number more clear. Um, we have a website redesign uh, project. And I originally had this in the select board operational budget and I moved it over to capital budget for $5,000. This will give the departments the ability to manage their own web pages. Um, and it can be phased in over a series of years if we want to do it. Yeah. Who's our vendor? Just curious. Virtual Town Hall. Yeah, Virtual Town Hall and Schools. Thank you. Gotcha. Uh, the Route 9 school zone lights, there's a blinking light over there, there's a broken down bro blinking light over yonder, and they need to be put back up, and $13,000 is the amount. Articles 12 and 13, this is something new and different, and it needs to be t discussed much further. We thought about the school budget, and one of the big things about the school budget is that they have to manage risk. And whenever you have to manage risk within the school budget, you always put more dollars in. And the risk that any school de department needs to think about is a mid-year placement of a student who needs to spend, that requires a lot of spending in order to put that person into the appropriate educational program, whether that be a vocational program or some other kind of program. And all these students have the right to an education, same as anybody else. So, But you don't know. You could get five vocational placements, and that way you're talking about $80,000, dollars maybe a little less than that, to put that person into the uh, Smith vocational program. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, is there some way that we can establish a separate stabilization fund, which is not part of the operational budget, that will provide enough money so that the schools can draw from it if they have an unanticipated need mid-year that couldn't be foreseen? 
So these two articles do, do, does that work. The first article establishes an educational contingency stabilization account and transfers from a regular stabilization account a pot of money into this new stabilization account. And then the Article 13 appropriates from the new stabilization account a certain amount of money in, uh, in order to give the school department the flexibility to bend their budget, their operational budget down without having to take that risk into account because we've taken care of the risk here. So, so I have the, a few questions. Sure. So um, that would be for, you, you mentioned um, someone coming in with a disability. Does it have to be a disability to be with somebody with an educational need that we don't cover and that we legally require to provide? And that's midway through. So that could be a vocational school okay. or an agricultural school. So, um, and that would be the only reason to use it? That would be, that's the intent. That's the intent. So with, how would they take the, and with this, how would they take the money out? Would they have to come can they just do it just because, or would they have to still get a, an, um, an, a, an okay from a certain board? No, this would be a standalone. The way this is written right now, this would be a standalone article that they can draw from. Okay. Just Save like it. a savings account at any time? At any time. Okay, for any reason? For the reasons that are spelled out in the, uh, in the article. So could they buy a bus with this? No. Could they? Could they fix a locker room? Could, could they, they fix a locker room? No. Could this would be, we'd have to craft this in such a way as that it would be associated with student costs, mid-year expenses associated with student costs. Okay. And is the idea to put money into it every year to grow the amount? That's an item for discussion and negotiation. So this is, again, this is new and different. We've uh, presented this to the business agent and the superintendent of schools. They've mentioned it to the school committee. We're, this will only work if we all work together and, uh, and are comfortable with it. One of the things that you anticipate is the, what do we do to replenish this? We could come up with an arrangement and I'm just, talking off the top of my head that we could replenish the stabilization account by transferring in free cash equivalent to whatever they return at the end of the year. So it gives them an incentive to invest in their own risk management. Hmm. That's a good idea. I like incentives. So the more they give back, the more we will give to them but if they're giving back more, it's because they need it less. Mm -hmm. So why would we give them more when they It's almost it? like sick days at work. Mm -hmm. So if I don't use my sick days, they're gonna save them up, so when if I ever do need them, mm -hmm. I can oh. roll them over. Oh, okay. So then if they ever did so need something, they that, have a pop. It stays in that same account for year after year. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no sunset provisions on either of these two articles. Mm -hmm. And do we have an idea of how much we wanna be for Article 13 putting into it for the first year? This is all subject, I'm just going to make up a number, let's say 100,000 transferred from stabilization and still keeps us above the 2 million mark. Okay. So I'm thinking just, sounds like a great idea, but I would think that we would try to match the amount in the first year to what we would try and estimate, and it's hard from your year to estimate the risk to be, mm -hmm. to try and level it out so that we're not putting any more or less money in than we otherwise would be. Mm -hmm. And then the coming years, we can kind of evaluate, do we need to put any more money in? Can we dial it back? But that way it's hopefully not too controversial because the bottom line doesn't change. Right. That makes sense for the first year. Right. So we can go to the schools and we can ask, you know, so what mid-year placements did you have and what did that do to your budget? Mm -hmm. um, and then that gives you a sense of how big you need to make this stabilization account in order to address. Okay. And even if you're managing part of the risk, not all of it, let's say the number is too much for us, uh, you, you're helping them develop budgets which are, which are more 
easier for them because they don't have to think about the unknowns mm -hmm. as much. So right now they're kind of doing this already in a way because they're using the school choice money, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So now this would free up school choice money that they could use it because they have will have a, a real stabilization. Yeah. So is it an agenda item for an upcoming tri board meeting? Or? Yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to have to talk to everybody about How this. How much is in the school choice now? Uh, I've asked for that information. I don't have it yet. Oh, okay. If I can combine articles uh, 12 and 13 together, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. But right now they're presented separately because there really are two different kinds of transactions. Mm -hmm. Establishment and transfer and then appropriation f make it available for spending. Yeah. Okay. Article 14, demand fees for delinquent payments. We're allowed to, we charge $15 per demand for motor vehicle excise, for sewer, for water, for real estate, whether it's a $5 bill or a $5,000 bill. And fifteen dollars if you're late on your on your payment, and we have to send out a demand fee. It's fifteen dollars. The state allows us to tr um, charge as much as thirty. So um, we we are considering, and you heard Sue Glowatsky talk about this, about uh, effectively do doubling the demand fee to thirty dollars. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much support this is, but that would bring in a new um, revenue to the tune of $30,000. Is the state figure on a schedule? Like, is it planned to increase every X years by X amount? No. When was the last time they did change it? 2009. I think it's a good thing because, <clears throat> I mean, I think people are used to it. You look at any credit card, you're going to get charged at least that if you're late. It doesn't matter if you're a you know, how much late? If you're late, even if it's a 10 bucks, you can get charged a fee. It's like, so that's on banks, it's on credit cards, it's on pretty much almost everything, I think. Mm -hmm. So I think people are used to it, type of. Article 15, recreational marijuana local option tax. We already passed this. We passed it at 2%. The law got changed, so now we can do it at 3%. So I'm going for the additional, uh, percentage here. Oh, the lot did get changed? I'm sorry? The lot did successfully get changed to yep. 3%? Yeah. Cool. Do we have anything even in the horizon that's, that's going to affect us? Yes. Um, so I was approached uh, last week um, by a, uh, a local grower who's looking to get into the recreational marijuana uh, business. They, they actually submitted a petition which didn't meet the minimum requirements for petition articles. So there is interest out there. Um, mm -hmm. So um, there's a building permit that's been pulled for the medical marijuana dispensary. Wasn't that at the Sunoco station? That, yeah. That, I yeah. thought that was a while ago, so I thought that maybe it fell lot. through. Oh no, no, it's still. They just take a long time. Yeah. Everybody's waiting for the state to finish their regulations, which are due on March 15th. So mm -hmm. I think once March 15th comes around, people are going to start working on this more earnestly. Mm -hmm. We have a moratorium in place for recreational marijuana, which is going to expire on November 30th, 2018. Um, we have no moratorium on, recre on medical marijuana. And so we, you know, that's allowable in the town of Hadley. But, but the recreational one is not. No, it isn't. Not yet. And do we currently have any kind of like limitations on, besides zoning, but on numbers of actual retail marijuana that we can have? Right now we don't have that. And again, we we looking for the final regulations to be promulgated. Um, on recreational marijuana, so we have a sense of, so what, what are we talking about? Because there's these new categories of recreational marijuana facilities that sprung up that were not contemplated, at least by me, mm -hmm. 
when the ballot question passed, there's a the social recreational marijuana facility, basically a pot pub, if you want to say it like that. Uh, that was never talked about before. This is now something that's in the draft regulations, and we'd have to think about what that looks like. And are there conversations going on at the administrator to manager level, but with member communities, select board level, planning board level, because working over at the Amherst town meeting, they're talking about putting limitations somewhere in the range of like four to eight on how many retail establishments there can be. Mm -hmm. And I just keep thinking, well, are they aware they can just go down the street to Hadley if they yeah. limit it to like two? Yeah. Right. So I'm just wondering, is there communication about these figures or about the moratoriums and et cetera? Right. So we're talking at the small town administrators of Massachusetts have been talking about this a lot. Okay. Um, so there's been, a, and this is a very heavy Western Massachusetts oriented organization. The uh, Managers Association are talking about it. I'm talking about it with Paul Bockelman, before him, Peter. Heckenblechner. I've talked to the, the mayor of East Hampton, who's no longer there, and some of the other surrounding communities, so that we're, so the, these establishments aren't playing to communities off against each other. Yeah. But there are some towns that say, bring it on, you know, Wild Rail West, you know, Town of Orange, for example, refuses to put a moratorium in place. And if they want to have as much business development as they can get. So. Gotcha. Article 16, this is a residential uh, real estate exemption for elderly. Leave the doors open? Or yeah, what? leave the door open, please. Okay. Thank you. This is recommended by the um, the assessors, and I think it's a good idea. Article 17, that's reserved for the Community Preservation Act, and apparently there are two proposals, Amy? I believe there are. I believe it's the um, the church, painting of the church and the painting of the town hall. Yep. Article 18, this is appointment of the treasurer and collector. Um, there are two elected positions right now. This would transfer them from elected to appointed, but it would still keep two positions. So that's one I was wondering, is there much financial argument behind that one way or the other? That's what I'm trying to... Well, you look at, <clears throat> you look at the performance of Sue Glowatsky, our treasurer, our collector. Uh, and she's collecting uh, taxes at a, at a level which is way above the industry standard. Uh, we're the envy of the, the, the valley in terms of how much is being collected in terms of taxes. She understands the town, she knows the town, she knows how to process the paperwork associated with sewer, water, motor vehicle excise, real estate, um, she's on top of all of that. And if you look at the performance of Linda Sanderson, our treasurer, the kind of sophisticated financial management she's doing is landing on the moon kind of precision. So in that kind of an environment when things are working really well and you have two solid people who are doing that work, that's the kind of time that you, that you make this kind of change. Uh, you try to avoid making these changes when you're having experiences like our neighbor across the river um, who are who's struggling right now. So I think that <clears throat> given that these positions are elected now, uh, you probably have the best that you can expect to get. Well, I guess I'm trying to think through, because it's a clear argument, right, that if they're elected, it means that if they're doing a crap job, you can easily vote them out. If they're appointed, it makes it harder for you to actually, like, replace poor performance, right? And I get that now we have, obviously, higher performers, they're great. I'm thinking, is there any uh, comparison studies, anything that say, historically, in small towns in the situation, it's financially, towns are better off when they can easily replace those staff members, or they're financially better off when they can ensure stability? Mm -hmm. and staff members that are properly trained and et cetera. And see, I was thinking the op 
the opposite a little bit because if you're um, um, appointed, they can look at you know your it's choosing more properly. choosing properly. Not voters, it's, it's not a popularity voters. type of thing yeah. where someone else can just get in and it's just because they're really popular and then they mm. can't do the job. Yeah, that's a good point. So yeah, so I'm trying to find are there any numbers to back any of that up to say that it's best practice and financially speaking in smaller yeah. communities. This is something that's been recommended twice by the Department of Revenue. Um, gotcha. So strong point then. Yes. And who appoints them? This would be by the select board. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Yeah. Article 19, Animal Control. This is uh, submitted by the police to help them manage the uh, stray dogs that they encounter. Yeah, I saw quite a bit on this. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. I don't know. It goes on full page 22. Why is this so long? Is it just because we didn't have anything in there? No, actually, we had something in there, but it all needs to be rewritten. You rewrote the whole thing? Yeah, we rewrote the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Article 20. This is something that the uh, Select Board uh, talked about on November 1st. They met with uh, Charlie Konecki. Um, I have one other question. Sure. I'm sorry to oh, yeah. This is on the, on the, just to quickly to go back to the dog thing. Does this, will this um, mean we'll get. Uh, will there be more money because more people are doing licenses? Will this increase Probably. money for us? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I had a feeling that that was going to help us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Article 20 on page 22, mm -hmm. Mosquito Control District. Yeah. Uh, the select board met with Charlie Kaneki, who talked about the newly formed Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District and asked the select board to support um their their proposal and so we have very f conceptual language to join uh, the become a member of the pioneer valley mosquito control district for a minimum of three year period um i don't have a whole lot of information beyond that i've i've asked the lead community to provide me with better information as to what's going on. I know that they applied for a grant, uh, efficiency and regionalization grant. I know that they were awarded $150,000 uh, in order to uh, conduct the first year, uh, first year uh, operations. But I don't have a whole lot of more information. I know that there's a mosquito control district in the Berkshires and this is definitely something that's practiced on the east coast um, but the formation of the district the commissioners the expertise that they have how much money are we talking about being assessed and how is that assessment going to happen i don't have information okay Article 21 on page 23. So, yes. So, if will you be getting more information before we this comes to to the um, annual meeting? I have asked for information. I I think that um, if you ask for information, and you don't get anything. That's an easy. We're not doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, until we're okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Article 21, the Public Nuisance Bylaw. This is something that uh, the building inspector and the uh, fire chief have asked for in terms of being able to manage uh, dilapidated properties as well as uh, the facing of properties by graffiti. Mm -hmm. Article 27, this is the first of the stormwater bylaws. Right now we have a stormwater bylaw which is in our code. It does not comply with the new MS4 requirements and so we've redrafted this in order to make sure that we do comply. Going all the way over to Article 35. 
I'm sorry, for Article 23 on page 35. Article 24, next page over, Article 25, 26, 27, 20, 27. These are all reserved for the planning board. Mm -hmm. All right, and they're, they're likely to trim this down considerably. So we've come into the first of the three petitioned articles on page 36. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, act of special legislation which calls for instant runoff balloting, a new form of, of uh, balloting for your annual elections whereby you take uh, your first choice and you list your first choice candidate, but then you rank your preferences for second choice, third choice, etc. If the first choice gets 50% of the vote or better, then that first choice person wins the election. But let's say it's a three-way split at 33% each. The, the candidate receiving the least amount of votes would be disqualified, and those votes cast for that candidate then would be reapportioned to the remaining two candidates so that they would get, uh, one of them would get uh, more than 50% and then that would be the, the, the winner of the, the, of, the, of the contest. This is a... F Seems complicated. Well, no. it's an act of special legislation. We, we would have to take a look at that special legislation. It re our ballot machines are not equipped to handle this kind of voting. So there's a hidden capital cost in here. Um, we would also have to uh, adopt at a later date a bylaw whereby the details of instant runoff balloting are spelled out. I've just sort of outlined the most basic outline of what that would look like, but how does it really look like? What happens in the case of a writing candidate? What happens in the case of a tie? What happens in the case of just takes you a moment's reflection to come up with any different number of anomalies that would have to be spelled out in, in detail. So that's a that's an issue that we need to ask the petitioner of okay, well let's let's say that this passes, we submit the special act of legislation, that passes the great in general court, it comes back, we pass a bylaw, or we write a bylaw and it doesn't get passed. What does that mean? So that's you know, we want to find out a little bit more about this. So how do petition articles work when we would have to, I mean, if it's special legislation, can it be passed in spirit, even though, like, technicalities may be off that we need to, like, vet through legal and et cetera? Like, I'm wondering, because if anybody can just try to petition something, but not all their I's or T's would be dotted because they're not lawyers, mm -hmm. how does that actually work out? Well, there's a couple of different ways that you do it. You, you hope that they do it in here. They hope that uh, the, you hope that they put in the ability to make some editorial changes that don't change the subject or the intent of the uh, of the, uh, the the question here. They've managed to put that information in here so that that's possible. The other way to handle it is to say you do it by the motion. So you write the motion the way it needs to be written, and just talk about. All right, so folks, we had to make some changes here in order to make sure that this actually runs smoothly. Um, and you work with the petitioner so that they, they get up on Tommy and floor and say, I am in agreement with the motion. Uh, and uh, we then get into the debate and take the vote. Article 29, this is a, was submitted by petition. Um, this would move the, the, the intent of this petition article is to move the location of the proposed new senior center from the property just across the street up to the north end of town at the property that we acquired the nine, and nine acres or so at the intersection of Stockbridge Road and 
River Drive. Petition that? Well, it was handed to me by two members of the American Legion. Oh, they don't like people using their parking lot? Yeah, there's some there's some disagreement over the use of the parking lot. Thank you. What's involved in getting a petition to? Petition article for an annual town meeting requires ten signatures from ten registered voters in the town of Hadley. For a special town meeting, it's a hundred. If uh, you wanted to call a special town meeting, it's two hundred. Uh, the first place to stop would be at the clerk's office and she'll provide you with the forms to do that. Then it's got to be submitted to me Then we certify the signatures if it makes the certification process then it goes on to the warrant. Okay. Article 30. Uh, this was a majority vote by the way. Article 29 is a majority vote. Article 30, to rescind the Senior Center funding submitted by petition. This would amend, basically rescind, the two votes that raised $7.1 million for the construction of a Senior Center, um, minus any money that we've already spent. Yeah, I was going to say, didn't we spend some hundred? We've spent about $200,000 right now. How much support was there for that? Well, they have four, 19 uh, registered as voters signed that petition. Hmm. This is a majority vote. No ballot vote is required, uh, and it would be binding. Hmm. We're having legal review of this. We have signed contracts to the tune of $570,000 for OPM services and architectural services. So, if we've signed contracts, we have, we're bound to honor those contracts. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that we understand the uh, uh, impact of this article. Mm -hmm. I think, um, um, I was talking about it earlier, I think in some, some cases, um, that the way it was, this, the the senior center maybe that because um, there was a lot of debate about the community center, um, and I think that you know some people may not that there. I think pretty much most people can see that there needs to be improvements and needs to be something, but it's a lot of money, and. Uh, and it's only for one purpose, and I think that that's um, maybe that's what some people might have been thinking when they signed that. Well, just to just to walk everybody through the history, we took two votes of town mm -hmm. two town meetings followed by two ballot votes, uh, and they were all supported by the voters. We also had a public hearing on this matter, which is on YouTube, uh, and the issue of the parking lot came up and was addressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the last meeting, there was quite a bit of talk at the last meeting about the, uh, I mean, the senior center. I didn't mm -hmm. really hear people say that they don't want a senior center, but I heard a lot of talk, you know? There mm -hmm. was a lot of debate mm -hmm. on that before it was pushed, before it went through, I thought. I, I'm I'm surprised we could that 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 we that is something that you can even do <laughs> that you can rescind. You can uh, up to a certain point. And yeah. That's one of the things that we're reviewing yeah. with legal is you know have we have we taken so many steps on this project that <clears throat> that we're not able legally to pull out of it anymore because yeah. we do yeah. have uh, obligations. It just it doesn't seem right that under twenty people can make a default on a our, um, you know, agreement that we've made with all these yeah. various, that seems a little... Um, well, they can't. I mean, all it does is bring it, it just has to be discussed again at town meeting. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's not like they can make a change. Correct, David? I mean, all it does is bring this, it to this may, this may be legally binding. We're not entirely sure that it isn't. That's only um, if everybody votes for it. Well, yeah. A majority. Hmm. Ah. We, we saw the outcome. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine. Uh, we, we saw the outcome when they wanted this, the senior center wanted their, it there. We saw how many people they had come over. <laughs> we saw how many people were there that they needed a whole nother room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, it was a, uh, you know, most well attended meeting I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. True. We'll have to get them all back out. <laughs> well, they would be. I mean, if they thought that that was going to happen, I'm sure they would be. And to have it last is not a bad idea. <laughs> so we're meeting regularly in order to iron out this issue. We did have mm -hmm. a, uh, we did have a, uh, a uh, informal meeting scheduled with the American Legion in order to hear their concerns and to have mm -hmm. a straightforward conversation. Sorry about that. Um, they chose to postpone that meeting and submitted instead the uh, the petition articles. But the door is still very much open. The olive branch is very much still being extended. That the select board wants to meet with the, 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 the Legion. Uh, we've been great partners in the past. We've had a very long history together. Uh, so, you know, can we work together? Can we all get something out of this rather than everybody losing out of this? Because that's the other side mm -hmm. of the coin. So the parking lot belongs to the town, not to the American Legion, is that correct? The upper parking lot does, yes. Part of the uh, lower parking lot belongs to the town in the form of an easement. So there's an easement from Route 9 up to the uh, upper parking lot that's uh, owned by the town. Hmm. All right, well I would say we hold off on voting for any recommendations until we can have um, Terry. We don't have any time crunch, so we so need to do it now. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I think we went through this. Uh, we're going to talk about the, let's push off the um, uh, form of government. Let's talk about that maybe at the same time we're going to talk about the CPA, I mean the, the um, override. Just where did select board leave off on form of government stuff? I heard them very clearly handed to the finance committee. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking in terms of their stance on it, rather. <laughs> I'm trying to remember because it was so long ago we talked about it. But I think they're looking for us to to do something similar to. Um, Override. I mean, that's that's where we would. Gotcha. But I think that that's not something we're going to be able to get on. The it's not something we're going to be doing right away. Where we, you know, we have to get through town meeting first. But we have to still keep keep it up on on all of them. Let's keep trying to, if we have time, to uh, discuss it because mm -hmm. we don't want to let it go. And plus, we've already met. We've we've seen, I've seen them twice. The gentleman that came in to discuss it, Terry has too. And then you, we've, uh, you know, he's discussed it with the finance. I don't want to, I want to keep it while it's still fresh. I mean, we can always go back and review it on the, the YouTube probably. But, um, I think, uh, it's 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 a. It, I think that might have something to do. You know. We're, especially if it changes from elected to appointed. I mean, that's all in that. Especially, too, it also involves the override with the HR person and the finance. Yeah. finance. It all ties kind of together. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything you wanted to just mention about it now, or is it good for now? Nothing I can think of. So we can call it a night. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about, David? Or oh, could... all sorts of things happening. Um, March 19th, the House Ways and Means Committee is holding a public hearing on the budget. So that tells me that their uh, budget 
proposal will come out a week after that. So sometime around the end of March, beginning of April, we should see another cherry sheet. I was talking with the school superintendent about why the assessments on charter and choice were lit up with like a helium balloon. Mm -hmm. And she said that she can't tie the governor's numbers back to anything uh, within the, uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. So the situation may not be quite as tight as, as we imagine right now. So I'm going to be looking at the uh, House Ways and Means numbers, uh, particularly the assessments, to see if we have some relief there. Yeah, I saw her uh, too, and she did mention that she was she, it did, the numbers didn't seem to make sense to her, and she was reaching out and seeing. She was she was really trying to see what she could do. Yeah, so uh, intuitively it makes sense because yeah. I just don't see the demographic shifts that those numbers would speak to. Mm -hmm. You know. I hear tell of another petitioned article out there, so we may have some additional information we don't know. Another petition article? I don't know. That's what I hear. Can they do that now that you've closed it? The law is silent about uh, about how we handle that, so I'd have to go to council and find out. A petition oh. about what? Uh, having to do with transfer of property rights, having to do with the Legion. Now how about the one that we kicked, there was one that we kicked off because of not enough signatures. Yeah, so we, we had a, um, a petitioned article that uh, asked us to rescind the moratorium that we have in place for the recreational and marijuana. That was submitted with five, eight, ten signatures and five of them were not registered voters of the town so failed to meet the ten registered voters signature criteria. I presented that article to the selectman regardless because right. it was a submitted article and the selectman said take it off. Take it off. It now can they come back on if they get the other five? Again the law is silent on that. So they okay. Uh, I, I don't know how that's handled. Okay. <laughs> In Deerfield, where I used to work, if somebody submitted something after the warrant was closed, we said, we'll, we'll put it on the next town meeting. And we always got their uh, assent to something like that. Oh, oh, because the next town meeting would be, need 100, but you would, if they just missed it, you would allow it to go for the yeah, 10. but I don't know if that, that, that's Deerfield, that's not here. Right. But and that, re that requires people to be willing to, to to, to wait that long. Mm -hmm. I don't think that would happen in either of these cases. Okay. All right. All right. Well, if we don't have anything else, let's uh, adjourn. We should adjourn. 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 Thank, Thank you. Good okay. meeting. Thank you.